Hi everyone. Because I like deckled edges and I like to frame my watercolors without mats that cover the edges and float the painting on top of the mountain board, I tear my paper to achieve the deckled edges. The piece that you see over here is an older painting that I just happened to have laying around in the studio. It's an acrylic on watercolor paper. The paper is 300 pound Archer's cold press paper and it's a full sheet so it comes naturally with the beautiful deckled edges. When I'm working on smaller pieces, I have to cut the paper down to size and it doesn't have the deckled edges. So what I do when I remove the paper from the mountain board is I tear the paper in such a way as to achieve a nice looking deckled edge. In class, students will often ask me how to do this, so I thought it would be a good idea to make a short video detailing my process. First thing I do when removing the watercolor paper from the board is to carefully cut along the tape on the side of the paper that isn't actually glued down to the board. And what I mean is this. The watercolor paper, you can see, I, I don't think you picked this up in the video, but there's a slight indentation where the paper ends. The paper ends right about here and the tape is glued to the board. Actually, it should be just around the inch mark. Yes, this is two inch tape and one inch is on the watercolor paper and one inch is glued directly to the board. This is what holds the paper in place. So the way I begin to take it off is I indent slightly into the paper and then with my X-Acto knife, I cut along that edge. And I usually give it two or three drags across with the razor blade, being very careful not to slip into my finished painting. And I'll move over to the other side. I don't know if you could see that. Oh, maybe you can. You can barely see the edge of the paper. That's the actual edge of the paper where it's glued down to the board. So I'll take my T-square, line it up along that edge. Now with my X-Acto knife, same thing. One, two, three, firm, even pressure. And we'll proceed to the other side. Just slightly indented from the one inch mark. Beautiful. But of course you could use your utility knife. And I'll do the same on the last side. I'll come in slightly under the one inch mark and cut along that edge. Nice. Briefly, before we move on, what I'd like to show you is how I remove the tape. I mean, you could start peeling it off if you want. Okay, so that, that quickly removed the bulk of the tape, but I take it one step further. What I do with my boards, my stretching boards, is I'll then wet the tape with clean water. So I reactivate the glue, and then after I let it set for a while, I'm easily able to take off the remainder of the tape and achieve a relatively clean stretching board. By the way, this is homosote. It's a piece of homosote that I bought at Home Depot. 
and I coated it with many layers of varnish. In fact, after this is removed, I'll coat it with another layer of varnish to seal this cut mark that I put in it. And it's good to go. Get that on the side. So now what? We have a watercolor. It's been removed from this board, but it still has tape on it, which I want to take off. So maybe I should get a clean board piece of masonite that's been varnished many times, as you can see. Put my watercolor face down. Why am I putting it face down? Because I want to dampen the paper along where the tape is on the other sides. I'm dampening the back of the paper. This will make it easier to tear, but I just dampen it. I'm not making it soaking wet. Then I'll flip it over. Now here comes the part you really want to be exact. I, I could have shown you a very simple way, just cutting it out. But I happen to like the look of the deckled torn edge. It's my preference. So instead of lining up my ruler, and using the utility knife to cut it. And of course, I would do that on a cutting board. I wouldn't do it on my masonite. Um, I'm positioning my T-square, making certain that I have a nice straight edge parallel to the tape, because I know the tape is square. And I usually come in away from the edge about an eighth of an inch. And that actually is a very important thing to do. The reason why it's important to do is it prevents me from tearing right along the edge of the tape. And sometimes when you tear along the edge of the tape, you get a little of the tape remaining. And I find that very annoying. So this is what I like to do. I indent slightly, grab the corner, and carefully, I'm pressing down on my ruler, carefully begin to tear. And I try not to stop too often in the tearing process, because that could actually create problems. You know, it's impossible to do one continual tear, but you want to work it in such a way that you're as smooth as possible. Here we go. Okay, gonna line it up again. Come in to just about one eighth of an inch, making sure that I am totally parallel with the tape. Want a nice clean line. Press, lift it up, and begin to tear. want to make sure you're about an eighth of an inch. Okay. See what's happening? Coming off nicely. And we'll flip it over. Just about an eighth of an inch. And I'll tear. Want to hold that ruler down firm and steady. Okay. So far, so good. We have nice feeling of frayed edges here. Yeah, that's what I want. I want it to come off nice and clean. It's the slight moistening of the paper is allowing that to happen. Good. Very good. So, let's take a look. 
so why did I do it this way? Why don't I just take the simplest route and cut it off? Well, the reason why I did it this way is because I like to frame my watercolors in floater frames without a mat. In other words, I always like the deckled edges to show. So having said that, I'll put this watercolor painting aside for a future video in which I'll show you how I frame my paintings for exhibition. I hope you enjoyed my short video on how to remove a watercolor painting from its mounting board.